In the workshop, Andrew's 504 boiler, part one. This is a vintage Stuart 504 boiler that I am assembling for my friend Andrew, so that he can run his steam engines. This is the earlier type of 504 boiler without mounting feet. As with all the early 504 boilers, it's very well made indeed. I gave this boiler a hydraulic test a while ago, and for that I had to remove the fittings. Also, the pressure gauge needed to be removed. This clip shows the original water gauge glass nuts and a new blanking plug. If you look at the water gauge nut on the left hand side, you can see some black stuff inside it. This is what's left of the rubber seal. And try as I might, I could not remove it. In the end, I had to heat this nut to a nice red colour to burn out the perish rubber seal. I've just realised that after the hydraulic test, I put the water gauge fittings in upside down. The top one is the bottom one, and the bottom one is the top one. The small threaded hole is designed to take a water gauge blowdown valve, which I will be fitting shortly. The hole in the top part of the water gauge needs to be large enough to insert a piece of glass tubing, which of course is the gauge itself. This is a very simple fix, I just swap the fittings round. To loosen them I'm using my Barco spanner, because the width of the jaws means that it doesn't mark the parts that you're working on. Quite a few viewers criticise my use of adjustable spanners, but this is not just any adjustable spanner, it's a Barco. And in no time at all, all of the parts are removed, without any marking whatsoever. I'm about to refit the blanking plug, and as always I'm using some Loctite 542. And yes, I am aware that PTFE tape is also good, but I prefer this stuff. In the same way, once again, that I really do like my Barco Spanner. I have several of them in different sizes, including one which is one foot long. That is only used as an ornament in my workshop, and it's screwed to the wall. Here are the two water gauge fittings, and before putting them back in their respective holes, I fitted a blow-down valve to the lower one. I don't know where this came from, it's a genuine Stuart blow-down valve, brand new, and it doesn't leak. Normally I use globe valves, but I want to keep this boiler original. I was really lucky with the lower water gauge fitting, I applied some Loctite 542, and it ended up in precisely the place that I needed it to be which was more than could be said for the top fitting that needed a couple of small shim washers. Here's a really simple tip to make sure that the fittings are in line. Insert the glass and rotate it as I'm showing here. As long as the circle that the glass describes follows the same shape as the fitting, everything's fine. I'm going to show an alternative method of cutting the glass. Normally I use a special glass cutter. Here I'm using a needle file. The glass snapped off, but it wasn't perfectly level because I didn't scribe all the way around. That is not a problem because, generally speaking, I clean up the ends of the glass using my one-inch belt sander, so I don't cut my fingers when I'm doing this. As you can see, you push the glass through the fitting, push the o-ring onto the glass, and then fit the nut. And when tightening the nut, it doesn't need to be very tight, just tight enough to seal. Never over tighten these gauge glass nuts because when the boiler's in steam, the glass will fracture. The boiler expands when heated and contracts when cool. So you need to allow for this when fitting pieces of glass tubing. With the glass tubing at the correct length and now fitted in place, it's time to put the top cap in. The original top cap was actually from a check valve. I'm using a blanking plug. And here I'm wiping away the excess Loctite 542. It's fitted with a washer just for effect. Because this boiler will be used for testing various engines and not part of a steam plant, I made this. It's actually made from alum bronze, which is a very hard material to machine, but this one came out okay. It's a 7 16 by 32 thread, and even though it fits the tap, it really doesn't look right. I don't know where this tap came from, I think it came out of a box of old taps that I had. The problem with it is, the threaded part in the base of it is a bit short. It's an insert, but the insert itself is not very long. The solution was to fit a new tap, 
and here I'm spannering the tap into position in the bush in the top of the boiler after first applying some Loctite 542 as usual. And once again, for the viewers who moan about my Barco spanners, please note that this one hasn't marked the hexagon at all. As you can see, the tap that I've just fitted is more in keeping with the vintage boiler than the horrible messy one in my left hand. These 504 type taps are well over scale for the job, but they're very functional. They even have a hand wheel that doesn't burn your fingers. Personally, I don't like the design or the way that Stuart safety valves look, but they've always been like that, and the 504 series must be fitted with one to make it look right. It's just my opinion, and it's okay in this case, because everything, apart from the part that I made, is original Stuart. I know that the boiler looks a bit wonky, that's because it's not fastened in place yet. What I'm doing is a pressure test. As I mentioned earlier, I've already performed a hydraulic test on this boiler. This is a compressed air test. I slowly wind the pressure up, and the Stuart safety valve starts to blow off at 60 pounds per square inch. I'm just going to test the blowdown valve on the water gauge. That's good, it opens and closes without leaking. This clip shows the original safety valve on the boiler and the new tap and the part that I made. But what I'm interested in are the pieces of sellotape and the adhesive that was left behind from previously removing some sellotape. Here you can see me picking away at a particularly stubborn bit. Eventually the top layer came off and then the cellulose thinners removed the adhesive. This, by the way, is only going to be a two-part series. In the next episode, I will install the heat insulation and give the boiler a steam test. I think it's a good time to give my triple expansion engine a steam test at the same time. Anyway, more about that later. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.